Hey everyone, this is Travis, uh, the developer for BirdStepper and BirdSound. This is a short tutorial to show you how to use MIDI bus to uh, synchronize the clocks of iOS apps that are using different MIDI protocols. Uh, you can think of a MIDI protocol as a sort of language, um, and unfortunately not all apps speak the same uh, MIDI language on iOS and so uh, it can be helpful to have a translator around and uh, that's essentially what Midibus is going to do for us here. It's going to translate uh, these different MIDI protocols into a common language that all the apps will understand. So I'm um, in Audiobus here and I've got DM1 loaded into the input slot and BirdStepper in the effects slot. I'm going to go to Midibus here it's going to scan for destinations. Uh, so these are apps that can accept a uh, clock signal from MIDI bus and uh, we can see we've got DM1 and BirdStepper, uh, which is good. Uh, if you tap on these entries, you'll see that the uh, icon on the left toggles between a blue arrow indicating that uh, MIDI clock will be sent to that app uh, versus a red X, which indicates no MIDI will be sent. Uh, so we want MIDI sent to both BirdStepper and DM1. Um, I'm going to quick hop, hop over to the monitor screen. Uh, I want to check to make sure that DM1 isn't sending MIDI to uh, MIDI bus, which can cause a loop, uh, a MIDI loop, and that's bad. So it's not sending um, MIDI events to MIDI bus, so we should be good to go. All right, so we got to go to uh, audio bus and we got to configure these apps so that they're listening for MIDI buses uh, clock signal. So we're going to go into DM1. We're going to go to the MIDI settings which are under song, MIDI, and on the left hand side you'll see DM1 receives MIDI from uh, a few options and uh, you can see MIDI bus on there and we want it to receive tempo information so I'm going to just toggle that switch and now I'm going to test this. I'm going to go back to MIDI bus. I'm just going to hit play and we're going to see if DM1 is picking it up. And it appears that it is. So you can use MIDI bus as a controller app um, using it to start and stop the pattern. And also to adjust the tempo. Okay, so we've got DM1 uh, listening for Minibus. Now we want to check and see if we can get the same thing going with BirdStepper. So we go to BirdStepper and we do basically the same thing. Uh, we're going to tap on clock, and the clock source here is internal, so we're going to switch that to uh, Minibus. <clears throat> and you'll see that the uh, Tempo uh, switches over to um, somewhere between 80 and 81. Uh, that uh, slight change in the tempo indicates that there's a little bit of inconsistency in the timing of the clock signal, but probably not enough to cause us any real problems. So we're going to close out of that. We're going to hit start and bird stepper. So now we can see that it's synchronized to the tempo, but there's also an offset in that the pattern is not uh, beginning at the same time in BirdStepper that it is in DM1. Uh, so we can fix that fairly easily by going back to MIDI bus and just uh, restarting it. So now we go back to BirdStepper. And now it looks like the pattern is uh, synchronized pretty effectively. So let's add an effect. Okay. 
So now we can control uh, the MIDI of both apps from uh, MIDI bus. And any changes in tempo that we make in MIDI bus should be reflected in both DM1 and Bird Stepper. Uh, so I'm changing the tempo to 120 beats per minute. I'm going to start it, and then I'm going to go and check to make sure that each of the apps is uh, picking up the appropriate tempo. So we've got 120 beats per minute in DM1. That's good. Let's check Bird Stepper. And it looks like we're pretty solid at 120, a little bit of oscillation. Um, but generally synchronized. So one of the things that's really cool about uh, Minibus is that it is compatible with many, many different apps uh, that are using different protocols. And so you can use Minibus to get a number of different apps that would ordinarily not be compatible to be compatible in terms of uh, MIDI sync. So uh, let's, let's add in um, PolyStepArp, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, so we're going to have to go into Poly Step Arp, and we're going to have to make sure that it is listening for uh, MIDI bus's clock signal. So we go into settings, and in fact, it's already selected. So well, let's just get a little arpeggio going here. Okay, so it's it's already playing on its own. We're going to have to go back to MIDI bus to get them all working together. And you'll also notice that when you hit the start button, uh, all of the apps that are uh, connected to Minibus will um, reset themselves at the beginning of the pattern, which is pretty useful. Now, because this is kind of a fair amount of setup, uh, that you probably don't want to go through every single time you want to use these apps together, uh, we're going to take advantage of AudioBus 2's uh, state saving feature. Uh, so we're going to save this as a preset. So we save the states for both DM1 and Bird Stepper. Uh, Poly Stepper isn't yet uh, compatible with state saving in audio bus, but uh, we can uh, now quickly load the settings that we just configured um, by the audio bus 2 uh, preset menu. So this is one I did earlier.
And uh, there you have it. So um, give it a try. Midibus is uh, only two ninety nine on the App Store right now. And uh, in addition to being in an inexpensive and really useful, um, there's kind of a larger um, reason to support Midibus, which is that it's open source. It's an open standard. Uh, it's not proprietary. It's not the property of any single company as a number of uh, MIDI protocols are. And so by supporting Midibus, you're effectively supporting open standards, open source, which means broader uh, and more reliable compatibility in MIDI sync between apps on iOS. And um, personally, as a musician, I think that that's um, probably the number one uh, thing that we need in order to um, seriously use uh, iOS as a music making platform. So uh, support open standards, support MIDI bus, and uh, yeah, have fun doing it. All right.